On today's show, a Lamborghini that's juiced, a fast car that gets 100 miles per gallon, and a preview of our Haggerty Hot List. Plus, a glimpse into Bronco history you won't want to miss. I'm Maddie Zavala, and this is Haggerty's Daily Driver. Buckle up. First up, Lamborghini has unveiled its newest hypercar. It's an 819 horsepower roadster called the Sean, which also sounds like what your college roommate wants to be called after six keystone lights. Hey bro, call me the Sean. Name aside, it's a big technological step for the company. Like any self-respecting Lamborghini flagship, it has a V12 engine, but it also has a 34 horsepower electric motor. Has Lamborghini traded their loafers for Birkenstocks? No. The e-motor provides extra oomph between 0 and 80 miles per hour, filling torque gaps during shifting and helping the car hit 60 miles per hour in 2.9 seconds. Should we tell Lamborghini that the P1 had torque fill in 2013? No? Okay. 48 volt systems aren't revolutionary, but Lamborghini's is different because it uses a supercapacitor instead of a traditional lithium ion battery. The supercapacitor is three times lighter than a battery with similar power, which is cool, but the real trick is that it recharges at the same speed it discharges. Batteries don't do that. This allows the Sean to completely recharge when you hit the brakes. Good, because without the e-motor, the Sean only makes a measly 789 horsepower, which is obviously not enough. Oh, and you can also use the e-motor to park silently, which is great because otherwise it's a very, very subtle car. Moving on. Do you remember the guy that built the turbine-powered Batmobile replica? His name is Casey Putsch, and he has a new creation, the Omega car. Casey believes there needs to be an evolution in how cars operate to reduce waste. So he, along with a crew of students, set out building the Omega. The goal is to create a car that goes fast, gets 100 miles per gallon, and uses as many recyclable materials as possible. For instance, the engine is a two liter diesel out of a Volkswagen Beetle. It sounds slow, but it should get the Omega to 60 miles per hour in under four seconds. And it does burnouts. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Once the Omega is finished, it will go on a US tour, so Look for it driving past a gas station in your town. And finally, it's natural as a car enthusiast to see an early 90s Honda Civic sell and bring a trailer for $50,000 and think, dang, I wish I would have bought one when it was cheap. Now, Haggerty doesn't have a crystal ball, but we do have a ton of experience analyzing trends in the collector car market. And we want to give you a chance to buy a car now that could be worth big bucks at Barrett Jackson in 2060. It's called the 2020 Haggerty Hot List. Our team of experts have put together a list of six new cars on sale now we think will be the collector cars of the future. Maybe the EcoBoost Ford Raptor makes the list? What about the BMW 8 Series? Ooh, maybe the TRD Toyota Camry. Okay, maybe not the TRD Camry. What do you think will be on the list? Leave your guess in the comments below and come back to Haggerty.com media at 8 a.m. Eastern tomorrow to find out. And coming up, we take you deep inside Ford's archives for a look at how the original Ford Bronco was made. But first... The new Bronco will be out next week, and our own Eric Wiener got a special invite for a rare look deep inside Ford's archives in Dearborn. Let's listen to company historian Ted Ryan talk about how the classic truck came together. So the, the stats and numbers on the archives in general are 16,000 cubic feet of records. Uh, there's three miles of shelving, so if you laid every shelf end to end, it would stretch halfway in towards Detroit. The origins of the Bronco actually go back to World War II. 
Ford built more than 270,000 Jeeps during World War II, and we had a lot of experience in the manufacturing. In fact, the vertical grille that's so iconic with the Jeep was a Ford design. These are the original documents launching the Bronco program. So Ford identified the opportunity to build something that could be both a rugged 4x4 and a highway driver. This is the memo that took the Bronco to the next step, and I love this particular line. I'm reading upside down. But for the development of a Ford utility vehicle, code name Bronco. And it's not very often that a code name extenuates over into the naming of the actual uh, vehicle itself. But there's three separate memos, all titled GOAT semi-prototype build. G period, O period, A period, T period. Goes over any terrain. Since the origins of the Bronco were in the Jeep, it had that same mentality. The GIs had all come back from the world calling the Jeeps the GOATs. And so Ford wanted the GOAT to be in the DNA of the Bronco from the very beginning. It's cool stuff. Nobody's ever seen this stuff before either. I mean, we don't typically share our executive communications. So uh, <laughs> we have one of the biggest collections of negatives is 350,000 styling negs from the early 50s all the way through to today. They're from the design center, the restricted. We typically would never show these off. But pulling out the S negs like we did, we did this for the design team so that they could see, you know, and they could look for a kernel of the different cars so that the DNA of the current Bronco would reflect the DNA of the previous generations. This is the real heart and soul of the design collection for Ford. We've got the drawings, all the different designs, and all the different clays of the different iterations. So the next section is trim and color, and this is more just lighthearted lark, but naming colors is the sport of kings. Rangoon red, Yuma yellow, sea pine green, it is a highly used collection. This gets used all the time because people will write us and they want to know what color, what the official name was. They want to know if, something, if something's going to be repaired. So we'll end up scanning some of the instruction sheets for the restorations. If you want to see more of the video and learn about what's inside the archives, go to haggerty.com media or click the link below. Tiffany Stone will be back next week to bring you all the latest car news. Until then, have a great weekend and keep driving.